Hi everybody, Physics Ninja here. Uh, I'm gonna look at a problem again, a DC circuit problem here, and I wanna calculate what is the power kind of delivered to the resistor or the power being dissipated by the resistor uh, would be kind of maybe a better way to say it. So we've got a simple circuit here. We've got one power supply, it's a 20 volt power supply, and I've got four resistors. They're kind of set up in a way to try to make the problem a little bit harder. Uh, so let's see how you set up this problem, how you cal calculate the energy dissipated in those resistors. Uh, if you like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up at the end. And if you like what I'm doing on this channel, don't forget to subscribe. We're gonna do a lot of cool stuff in the next couple months. So you wanna get plugged into all those details. So let's get started with this problem. So here's the circuit. Uh, I guess the first thing we wanna do, let's just remember how you calculate power uh, in a simple circuit like this. So we're dealing with power supplies and batteries, actually all the three cases, uh, the power can be calculated Typically, if you're talking about power supplies, you can usually just write it like this. It's the voltage multiplied by the current flowing through the battery. That'll tell you the power being supplied by the battery. Uh, this formula also applies for the power being dissipated. The only thing you have to remember is that the V for that case is simply the potential drop across that resistor. So a lot of times when you're talking about uh, resistors, sometimes instead of writing V, you multiply, or sorry, you substitute uh, the value of the voltage drop across that resistor, which is given by Ohm's law, and then you still have the original I that I had here. So this can get combined as Ri squared. This is kind of a more standard form when you're talking about resistors. Uh, you can also eliminate the current again using Ohm's law. If you eliminate the current, it's kind of the same, the same equation written three different ways, and you can write it as this V squared uh, over R. Um, for what follows, for the resistors, I'll calculate this. For the power supply, I'll use this form. Uh, which means I need to know the current. I need to know the current flowing through the battery and I need to know the current flowing through each one of these resistors. Now, there are several loops to this. There's several branches to the circuit, so you have to be a little bit careful. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to label some currents here. I'm gonna call the current over here I1. Oh, that's the current flowing all the way up until this branch. And that means it's also the same current that's gonna flow through this four ohm resistor down here. This is still the same current I1. Now, once it gets to this junction, well, part of that current is going to flow down through the one ohm resistor. Let's call this I2. And part of that current is also going to flow through this branch over here. Let's call this I3. So we need to find what those currents are. Then after I can easily find what power is being dissipated by each one of those. First thing I'm gonna do, uh, let's actually find how much current is flowing in this section over here. What is the current I1? And the easiest way to do this one actually is to try to simplify this network. This is one of those networks I can simplify using an equivalent resistor. And the reason I wanna do that is because it's the easiest way to find how much current is flowing through this battery. So what we're gonna do first is I'm gonna combine everything here in this kind of yellow box because I've got two resistors here that are in parallel with each other. So everything in the yellow box here I can combine. Now let me call this um, our equivalent, however. Let me just call it our equivalent and maybe put a one here because it's not the total equivalent resistor. It's really only what's in this uh, shaded yellow area here. All right, so this are two resistors in uh, parallel with each other which means one over our equivalent, which gives me one over one plus one over three. Um, this is three over three plus one over three, gives me four over three, which means that both of those can be combined to give me one equivalent resistor, which I've called our equivalent one, uh, equal to three over four ohms. So that simplifies it now because that means that the total equivalent resistor, I'm gonna have a two ohm that is in series with a three over four ohm resistor, that it's also in series with a four ohm resistor. So the total equivalent resistance, let me write total like this for this guy. Um, it's gonna be two plus three over four uh, plus four. If you put things on a common denominator, I don't know, four is a common denominator for that. Uh, this will be eight plus three plus 16, um, 11, 27. 27 over four is the equivalent resistance of this entire network. So once you have this, that means that this complicated circuit can be simplified into something that simply looks like this, a 20 volt battery that is connected to one equivalent resistance equal to 27 over four. That's pretty simple. That's the simplest circuit you can ask for. 
Um, again, this would be 27 over 4 ohms. So you can actually solve for what that current is. And really what that current is, that's the current flowing through the battery, which is also the current flowing through the 2 ohm resistor, which is the current flowing through the 4 ohm resistor. So at the end, what you end up getting here is that you get 20, that's the voltage across this branch, has to be the voltage drop across this equivalent resistance, which is the value of the resistance, 20 over 4, multiplied by the current, and it's really the current I1 here that I'm looking at. So with this, you're able to solve for what the current is in that leftmost branch of the circuit. Uh, I1 gives me 80 uh, over 27 uh, amps. I'm going to leave things as a fraction. You can write that as a decimal if you wanted to, but I kind of like it as a fraction like this. Um, <laughs> just my own personal preference. All right, so we're almost done. Now we need to find what are the currents I2 and I3. Uh, for that, I notice here that I have a junction here. I have some current flowing into the junction, and I also have some current flowing out of the junction. This means that I can write a junction rule, which says whatever flows in has to be what's flowing out. This is I2 plus I3. Now I'm not quite done. I know what I1 is. However, I don't know what I2 and I3 are. But given that um, both of these resistors, the 1 ohm and the 3 ohm resistor, are in parallel with each other, that means that the voltage drop across each branch here has to be the same. So the voltage drop across the 1 ohm resistor is simply 1. That's the value of the resistance multiplied by the current flowing through it. I2. That has to be equal to the voltage drop across this 3 ohm resistor, which is 3 multiplied by the current flowing through that resistor, I3. So at the end, what you can do now is you can simply solve now. We have everything we need in order to solve for what I2 and I3 are. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have I1 must be equal to, okay, we have to either eliminate I2 or I3. Let's eliminate I2. So that's 3I3 plus I3, which gives me 4I3. So at the end, I3 is simply I1 divided by 4. That gives me 20 over 27. And the last one is I2. Well, I2 is simply 3 times I3. 3 times I3 is 3 times 20 over 27, which gives me 60 over 27. And again, everything, all the currents are measured in amps here. Um, okay, so we've got our three values of the currents. Now let's go ahead on the next page and look at what the power is dissipated in all those three resistors. So here are my three currents, I1, I2, and I3. Um, let's start by the power being supplied to the circuit. That's the power being supplied by this battery. Let's just give it a little B over here. That's simply the voltage of the battery multiplied by the current. This is pretty straightforward. It's 20 multiplied by how much current was in this branch. That was the current I1. This was 80 over 27. Uh, that means this guy here is 1600 over 27. That's the power being supplied by the battery. You can substitute that in your calculator. I think I get 59.26 watts. All right, let's have a look at all these resistors now. Let's do the power being dissipated by the 2 ohm resistor. The power being dissipated by the 4 ohm resistor. Power being dissipated by the 1 ohm. And the last one, power being dissipated by the 3 ohm. Okay, again, for this case, since I'm looking at resistors, I just calculated how much current flows through each one of those. It's probably easier to use. The power being dissipated is R multiplied by the current squared. So for the 2 ohm, I get 2 multiplied by the current in that branch. The current flowing through this 2 ohm resistor was 80 over 27. Now don't forget to square that. All right, you square 80 at 6,400 times 2 is 12,800. 27 squared is 729. All right, power being dissipated in the 4 ohm resistor is 4 times the same thing, same current. Remember that current I1 was the same everywhere down here. Same current flowing through the battery. Uh, that was the current I1. All right, so that means that the power being dissipated by the 4 ohm resistor is simply two times this value. Well, that's easy. That's 256 divided by 729. 
All right, the power being dissipated by the one ohm. Be a little bit careful here. Remember the one ohm, we had a current I2 flowing through that one. And I2 had a magnitude of 60 over 27. So you get one is the value of the resistance multiplied by 60 over 27. Don't forget to square it. 3,600 divided by 729. Again, all of these numbers here are in watts, watts, and watts. And the last one is the three ohm resistor. Careful, that's not just three times the one ohm because the current is different. So it's three times the current I3 was 20 over 27. I square that. Again, everything is over 729. And what do you get? You get three times uh, 20 squared is 400. That gives me 1200. Now what I did was I added every single one here. So 128, 00, 0 25,600, 3,600, and 1,200. You sum all of those up, and what you end up getting, everything is in, over the same common denominator. It's 729. Uh, this is 43,200. That is the total power being dissipated by these four resistors. Now that doesn't look like the power being supplied. However, you have to put things on a common denominator. Actually, this one is not that obvious, but if I would have actually left it as 27 squared, you could have guessed. Instead of writing 729, let me write it like this, <laughs> as 27 squared. And 43,200 is actually 1,600 multiplied by 27. <laughs> so now you can see what happens. Uh, one of these is gonna cross off with one of those. And lo and behold, you get 1600 over 27, which equals 59.26. So the total power being dissipated by the four resistors is simply equal to the total power being delivered to the circuit by the battery. The energy has to come from somewhere. Whatever you put in from the battery has to be what's being dissipated in those resistors. All right, there you have it, folks. That's how you kind of tackle a problem like this. That's how I would do it. I like to deal with fractions. If you wanted to put in, um, just punch those numbers in your calculator, you're free to do so. Just be careful at the end when you add those up, you might end up with a fraction <laughs> or a decimal off, one one hundredth of a watt off. I wouldn't be too concerned about that. Uh, but just be a little bit careful with the rounding. You might not get them equal to each other if you're, um, if you're not cautious. All right, there you have it, folks. Good luck. See you next time.